Hello, hello, this is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about coil loss, which is going to be pretty much a variable static pressure and also duct preferences. So in other words, we're getting ready to start uh, doing manual D, which is sizing ducts. OK, so this is going to be the one of the last videos. And in the next video, we are officially going to be sizing the duct. OK, so let's get into it. All right. So as we mentioned in the other videos, <coughs> so what, excuse me. So we're going to have in here this, you always have the options, the option of hiding this construction bar. So you're going to go here to the view and then you're going to go to default construction number bar and you uncheck it. So that way we're going to have more room in our manual D or we're going to have more room for to see our duct layout. Now that we have everything ready, as you can see, you go here under duct and our ducts are ready, are already placed in there. And if you go to duct notation on the tree, you're going to be able to see even the CFM. Everything is ready to be to be already sized. However, as you can see in here, these registers are not round or in here you can see that this this uh, supply or return register or grill is not the one that we want. OK, and this is actually the system that is going to be showing. So you can always check and uncheck in here. It's right in three. But right now, since we're not doing that, what we have to do is we have to go to the duct preferences. But why is that? Because we don't want this kind of register. So in order to do that, we're going to be today talking about these two icons right here, the blower icon, which is says static pressure. That's where we're going to put our available static pressure. In other words, uh, pressure losses. OK, so let's get into it right there. So you, let's click. If we click, we're going to have in here the available static pressure. So now <clears throat> this is a very interesting topic. What is our what is remaining from our static pressure after the losses and what are we providing with the fan? So with the fan, we're providing 0.7 external ecstatic pressure at that the equipment design CFM. As you remember, if we go here in the equipment, we had already selected the system and in the system we have a split AC and in the split AC we have the CFM. 10,000 or 1,061 CFM, which is based on the manufacturer. But as I was saying in the previous video, CFM is married with a static pressure. So uh, if you're talking about CFM, you talk about at what static pressure. So the static pressure is 0.70. OK, so that's why in here we're starting with 0.70 in external static pressure. However, many <clears throat> contractors would say yes, but we should size it at 0.5 static pressure. So what happens is that imagine if we put in here 0.5, we're not going to have enough available static pressure with, or, or even you're going to need a, a smaller filter. OK, so let's go here. We we'll start with 0.7 external static pressure, but now we have pressure losses. We have in here basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pressure losses category. OK, so in one of the videos, I already calculated the coil loss and also I went into more specifics, which was an interpolation process. OK, so under in the interpolation process and for this coil, you know, we have the model number. Everything is based on the model number. And if you don't have the manual, you can always contact rep, contact the representative and they will provide you with the manual if you don't find it in the Internet. The only reason I'm using Goodman is, again, because we have a lot of information or manuals available. So since you have this uh, coil model number, you can you are able to find out the pressure loss on that coil in wet conditions. So that's what we did in a previous video. And that coil loss was 0.22 inches of water column okay so the same thing is going to be for that for the heat exchanger since this is uh, going to be what is this is this a gas furnace so usually in this case the heat exchanger is already accounted in the pressure loss see so this 0.70 this heat exchanger 
loss is already accounted. So that's why we're going to put zero. Now for supply and return grills, we're going to put 0 0.03 like manual D. If, if the normative of manual D suggests 0 0.3. And then we're going to put 0 0.3 for returns for filter. That depends on each case. If you want a thicker filter, which will be high efficiency, you're going to have a pressure loss big, a big pressure loss, say 0 0.2. However, if you have a very small or very basic filter, you're going to have a pressure loss of 0 0.10. So let's put an average of 0 0.15 pressure loss. And then don't, don't forget, when you get a filter that is high efficiency, this is higher. This is completely high and it's going to be affect, it's going to affect. So, so far, how much do we have as available? We started with 0.70 inches of water column based on the blower. And then because of my losses so far, I have 0.27 available static pressure. We want to have more, okay? But we, we, we still have to continue with the losses. What's the other loss? We don't have a humidifier. We balancing damper. Manual D also suggests 0 0.03. There we go. So what happens now is that we have 0.24 inches of water gauge or water column on or of static pressure. Okay, so that's pretty much it. But now what happens if I put in here instead of 0 0.7, 0 0.5? Let's go for 0 0.5 and then do 0 0.8, 0 0.5. There we go. See, my available static pressure is 0 0.04. And what happens if the customer says that, is, for example, some clients have cats, some clients have dogs, or they don't do they don't vacuum frequently so then they don't change the filter and then it's going to get more uh the filter is going to get dirty and it's going to give me more static pressure than 0 0.2 see now i have zero available static pressure which is not good so or what happens if a customer is having some health issues and she needs some high efficiency filter or oh, it happens that the high efficiency filter is Point, at least 0.2 or 0.18. See, I don't have any more available static pressure. We're, we're going to incur into some issues or we would have to load it. So we always check and take into account the worst case scenario, but in this case, we're going to put 0.15. And then that's the reason we point in here 0 0.70, 0 0.7, okay, for now. Now that we have this, what we're going to do, this is once we are going to draw the duct. This is the total effective length, and this is based on a critical path, the longest path possible, okay? And we're going to calculate the friction rate in here. Now, what we're going to do, this is for the coil, and this is for pressure losses. We're all good in here. We have available static pressure. We're all good in here. Now, what we're going to be doing is we need to consider this part in here. We need to see uh, to, to be able to draw the ducts. So we're going to do that a little bit quicker. So uh, do you see the gears? In the gears, it says duct preferences. Under duct preferences, you have by default all of these, see? And then round branch and round this. So for example, if I, uh, if I change it to this, I'm going to go here and see my ducts are different. Or, or, or if I change it to another one, uh, this is going to be different. See, go, we're going to go here. Yeah, this is also different. Not really, right? Okay, we're going to go here, for example, flex junction boxes. See, it's different. So what we're going to do is we, we're going to create our own library, our own library for this case. How do we create our own library? We're going to go under library and then DAC preferences. In DAC, Under DAC preferences, we're going to select a new, okay? This new is going to be, the ducts are going to be low velocity. It's not high velocity. It's not a big system. Residential, most of them are, all of them are low velocity. And what is going to be the name? I'm going to, I'm going to select as the name, let's say, only capitals, flexed, flex duct, okay, attic, uh, one story. How about that? One story. All right. Description. Under the description, we're going to have this, uh, Description is going to be uh, flex ducts. Let's do flex ducts right here. Flex ducts with uh, junction boxes. There we go. Um, we're going to put OK. And now what we're going to do in here is let's let's go with the settings. OK, so this is going to be the name. This is going to be the description. The duct layout is going to be user defined. 
you can always choose x axis x is planning but we can go into specifics later for now we're going to just put a user define this is going to be by default see let's just leave it by default for now uh, because I, I don't want to go very deep into this. I don't want to confuse everyone because this is the HVAC easy math channel, not difficult math channel, right? So let's put it in default, straightforward to the point. Auto register placement, we're going to put none for now, but um, what happens is that you can always put it along outside walls, perimeter, or middle of the room, compact. See, let's put it known for now. And now that size round to the nearest inch, but we can put in here IP since we're doing in the English pound units. If you are in other countries, you can put a standard metric SI sizes. There we go. So since we're in the US, we can put that. We're gonna use this use variable friction rate. This is the one that we're gonna be using for now. So we're gonna check that. And then automatic transfer reduction, we can do that too, but for now we're just gonna be leaving it like that. Okay, so now, Auto flex duct N, we're gonna put none, but you can always put, uh, you have more options. For now, let's put that as none. Uh, we're not gonna confuse anyone. Now, what we have in here is uh, the duct material. The duct material is gonna be for, uh, we're talking about flex duct, so we're gonna put everything flex. Round flex vinyl, trunk round flex vinyl, retro round flex vinyl, and trunk round flex vinyl. There we go. For duct height, for duct height, let's let's just leave it for for now for zero. See everything in here is zero. But this is the most important part: maximum velocity, minimum velocity. That's very important. So I don't want anyone to get confused on this part. So. I'm going to pull up tables from manual D, but in manual D, there are three different versions. We're gonna go for the most conservative, okay? So, okay, so the conservative, let's, uh, so we're gonna start with this table. So this is one of the tables where it, okay, I'm gonna locate it on this side. Okay, there we go. So for this table is indicating us that we have to, so for example, we have in here two categories. Let's go to the manual D in Rightsoft. So we have branch, trunk, branch, trunk. So this whole area is for the supply and this whole area is for the return, okay? So we're gonna start with, uh, with this supply and then branch and trunk. What do we have for supplies? For supplies is this column, okay? So for return is this column. Okay, so supply, trunks, recommended for flex is 600 and maximum 700 okay again supply for trunks recommended 600 700 supply for branches 600 700 so that's what i'm going to be putting in here 600 700 okay so i'm going to be putting in here 600 and then in here 700 in here the same thing 600 and in here 700 there we go. So now we have the velocities. What about for return? For the return side, what we're gonna have is the following. Return branch is return flex. We have for trunks 600 and the maximum 700. For branches 400 and 700. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be putting in our uh, system. But this table has been collected from ACA, so it's available in the internet and that's what I'm using it. So there are other, the, the velocity is very important, but uh, for now we're gonna be using this. So what we have for this then, for returns, we're gonna have in here 400 and then 700, and then in here 600, and then in here 700, okay? But now I want to bring up another topic in here, which is in other manual J, I mean in other manual D, what we have is this, this table right here. So in other words, in this table is telling me from 700 to 900, not from six to seven, it's telling me from 700 to 900. So the issue with velocity, so there's velocity in here, 900 FPM it's kind of high so when you have high velocity the issue is noise so it's a trade-off it's gonna be better if you have high velocity however it's gonna be worse for comfort for noise okay so that's why a 700 fpm is a good number so that's why i'm not using this for now and even in fact the new manual d that i'm that i'm checking is now this is number three 
It's telling you only 900, 900, 900, and then for return, 700 and 700. See, so 900 is still, I'm thinking of, about like, it's kind of a lot, especially for noise issues, but we'll see. For now, let's use 700, 600, 700, let's be conservative, all right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and continue with the next one. My minimum diameter is gonna, let's leave it at four, 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 and then we're gonna put in here none, none, everything none, none. This is just to go more into specifics, okay? Insulation, this is not gonna affect my calculation. You can put it medium, high, but just put it low and none. It's not gonna affect the calculation. And this is also very important, register size. <clears throat> so what is the register shape? The, usually it's going to be rectangular and what rectangular let's put like say 10 by 6 maybe or 10 by 4 or wh whichever you want wh wh what do you want to be your defaulted because we're going to change it anyways based on the uh, on the manufacturer or the registers that you have available now for this for return we can always leave it as say rectangular see rectangular uh, let's say 14 by 14 how about that 14 by 14 so we're we're, uh, we're putting the default options and then since it's going to be in the attic usually if the system is in the attic your your registers are going to be ceiling right so that's going to be ceiling okay ceiling grill okay ceiling diffuser two-way there we go two-way and it's going to be metal yeah there we go and then you have other options and then for the return it's going to be a ceiling grill see or you can all also put like a high wall low you have a variety we're gonna put in here a ceiling grill. So for this, since we're liking the number of 700, let's put 700 in here. And then free area percentage, 80%. And since we're liking here, uh, let's say 400, 480. There we go. So we have all the settings and we're gonna hit apply. And let's see. Now, what, what we have in the duck preferences, this is going to show up right here. Oh, it's not showing up. And why is that? Because let's count on this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it can only have 12 stored in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete one of them. So round, round metal. I'm going to go here, okay, right here, like preferences, round, round metal, go here, round, round metal, right here, let's see, round metal, and then what happens if I delete this, yes, okay, okay, and then let's see what happens, oh, there we go, now there is room for my new setting, so I have this setting which is flex duct addict one story, and then we're going to click in here like that, okay, here we go, we have all our settings, and Oh, by default, we have all our um, fittings. There we go. So we're going to go here. And finally, everything is ready for our manual D. As you can see, these registers are already placed in there. And then in the next video, we're going to be showing you how to put the sizes. Because this is not showing sizes. And that's easy, fixable. We're going to go here. This is uh, under notations. We're going to see in here, uh, show airflow. But in here, we're going to put put size to size and airflow and then go like this. Oh, now it's showing size and airflow. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, hit the like button and subscribe. Okay. Make any comments so, because comments help me out with improving this uh, channel. All right. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.